What's happening? Welcome to On The One. In today's episode, I'm going to analyze my tune, Massive, featuring Joe Satriani. And I have a guest to kind of muse over this Pro Tools session with me, Pitar Janic, everybody. What up? Massive. Not one of the songs that you played on. That's totally fine. I even love critiquing more when I'm not playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know that. Yeah, we know that. All right, this is a tune called Massive. Uh, wait, Massive? Massive. You're talking about... You yeah, 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 this one. Oh! How many... How many this it originally was... Dark song in E flat. That wasn't gonna last. We know that. <laughs> we, we knew then that it was a haunted house. Yes, haunted house. It was haunted house for the longest time. Then last minute, last minute, I decided to call this thing massive action because I was on a Tony Robbins kick. Remember that? Yep, I do remember <laughs> that. <laughs> Good thing you're then, calling it massive. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> then I'm like, this song is too dark. It doesn't fit my catalog. So I actually released a version of this tune on my album, The Optimist, vinyl only. If you have the vinyl edition, this tune in a previous form is on that album. But I didn't nail it, and I knew that, which is why I didn't put it on Spotify or anywhere else. But it's just kind of fun that it lives as this extra track on the vinyl record. We played it only once. We played it at City Winery in, in Nashville. Nashville. And it, to be honest with you, it did not work. You're right. It didn't work the way that it was. I had this like shreddy section in the middle where I was trying to get cute with this diminished thing. Yeah. And I was trying to get... Yeah. That's gone in this. Yeah. You, we bailed on the diminished thing. Let's take a look at what we got. Let's just get a little vibe going first. All right, we got a vibe going. Let's talk about who's all on this track. This, oddly enough, was recorded in, I believe this rhythm section, the, the basic tracks were recorded December 23, 2015. I had just gotten off of a, my first tour with Ben Rector, a fall version of the brand new tour, and I was writing some music. I wanted to do some of my own thing. I think I posted a video of this song and actually... I was like, yeah, this is too dark for my vibe. And Ben Rector commented like, whoever your A&R person is, you need to fire them because this is completely funky. You need to put this out. I was like, all right, I'll put it out. This thing won't focus on it. There you go. There it is. Z Dope synth part, but the synth part did get the father all rich. <laughs> Delete that. <laughs> Hey, cats don't know if they don't know some kind of monster. Okay, anyways, we got Michael Bland on the drums. Drums. Dude, tell you what, this is Michael's thing. He's so consistent. Every snare. I'm not gonna lie, that's more ring on a kit and a snare than I will. I know, I am like enjoying this more than ever. Now I'll tell you why I let the ring happen on this tune. Michael Bland has perfect pitch. Michael tunes his snare to the tonic. It fits the song. Fits so that's, the song. Why, that's why it works. It doesn't feel like a ring in the tracks. And honestly, I normally never use this much room mics. Listen to all these rooms. You know, I'm like normally anti-room mics. Yeah, delete that. <laughs> that's right. Normally those suckers are hide and inactive. This... Ooh, got that Skrillex down low. Or what is that? Rusko. Rusko is the dive bomb, yeah. right? <laughs> that does go down pretty low. That's low. Then we got, of course, Sonny T on bass. <laughs> we got the bass. Just a little EQ, a little DBX 160. Okay. Compressor, and then a little bit of EQ. 
His Warwick has so much low end and so much top end. So I tamed a little of that, added a little more of the J bass. Wait, you t- took it down? <laughs> well, yeah, I... volume going that's dope (laughs) (laughs) he gets the jank and the doink dog in there unbelievable he gets the jank and the doink dog unbelievable Sonny, then I got my rhythm guitar part just laying in the cut. Two guitars pan left and right. Play the exact same thing. Then, some programming done by Michael and Ryan Listman. Ryan is playing keys. Uh, Kevin Gastongwe overdubbed, but he got Father Allriched. Oh, you know what? No, Kevin is on this. This clavinet track is KG. Oh. Let's solo out all the keys here. Now, Ryan Lisman, king of the vibe keys. Yeah, you're right. Just vibing. Hold on. This part's dope. (laughs) Right in the middle, dude. That's tight. I mean, That's tight. I mean, dude, yeah. Initial basic tracks were like this. was going to be doing this sort of thing with the lead guitar because I had it written. Let me unmute these. This is actually my lead guitar scratch track. (laughs) Then I added the horn section. Now this Simplest horn heads arrangement I've ever gotten. Cause Michael knew the function. Look, I just need you to help thicken up the thing. I don't need anything crazy. It's a guitar feature song. Okay, so we got the horn heads. Woo! That's funky. <laughs> oh, they switched the hit they switched the hit to the berry. <laughs> then backwards. That's dope. That's funky. I love that you hear Kenny breathing and everything. I know. (laughs) Kenny's got the loudest, his buttons, man. He's got the loudest buttons in the game. All right. The track is feeling tight, but here's the deal. This song is, the reality is, this song is too dark of a song to be a Corey Wong song. It's too mean. It's <laughs> too much, it's, it's got, I'm not, I'm not skeleton spider guy. I'm not scorpion guy, okay? <laughs> what was that reference? I'm saying like Halloween, like scary stuff. Like this sounds to me like scary. You know, it's like, it's too mean. It's just so, heavy. It's what? I think the expression is heavy. Like, Oh, I'm down with heavy. Uh, are you? That's heavy. Bro, I note for note. No master of puppets. Well, good thing you got the teacher of the guitar player that plays in that band to play this. That's right. Satriani <laughs> was Kirk Hammett's guitar teacher in the Bay Area. That's insane. Okay. 
That brings us to <laughs> nobody other than Joe Satriani. They call him the Satch. The trumpet has Satch Mo. We have Satch Joe. <laughs> Do you know who Satchmo is? No, but just you call him Sad Joe. It's funny. Well, it's, you know, it's his nickname and then his first name. Yeah, I know, but it's funny. Okay, do you know who Satchmo is? Who is Satchmo? Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Like, come on, dude. I know who Louis Armstrong is. I'm just now. I've got a podcast called Wong Notes, and my very first episode, the guest was Joe Satriani. I had never met him. Still have never met him today in face to face. We get done with the podcast. He says, by the way, I'm a huge fan of your music. I'm a huge fan of Wolfpack. You're an incredible guitar player. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm melting. Joe thinks I'm great. And he goes, look, let's do something together sometime. I call his bluff a month later. I send him a track. I say, dude, I got this track. I think you'd be dope on it. I already recorded my guitar and stuff, but... I, I, I'm your lead guitar guy. This is like what you do that makes people go, oh. He goes, I sent him an email. I sent him the track. This is what he sends me back. Hi, Corey. I'm interested in hearing the track. Send me an MP3 when it's convenient. Cheers, Joe. Ho, ho. Yes. <laughs> Literally an hour later. You said what she did? <laughs> Here's the deal. When you got your heroes on the line, give them some T-ball. I made this chart in 20 minutes, outline the tune, give him everything he needs, and nothing more. Then I send him the demo. One, two. With me playing the lead guitar part. What does he come back with? He sends me back these tracks three days later that blew my mind. I couldn't believe Satch was on the track. All right, so I'm gonna, now what I do is I make my lead guitars inactive. You wanna talk an egoless, selfless act on your own album as a guitar player? I know where this is going. This is the only guitar solo on the album. I feel for me, like I've said my piece, I feel like I have gotten the message across that I want to with my guitar playing without guitar solos. That's kind of hard to do. Tell you what, this is why people are here. I know why people are here. You <laughs> want to hear that soloed Joe Satch solo. Go ahead. <laughs> Before the wee wee, you know those old, I mean, you're, you're all a little bit older than me. You remember those toys when you were a kid? When you were a kid, they gave you that glowing. So it's that like, laser tag. <laughs> Just give me that laser tag. This one. <laughs> <laughs> the <battery> back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's insane! Man, that's why you give him a solo, I guess. <laughs> that's insane! Wow. That's why you give Sag the solo. I can't I, solo like that. I've never heard a solo outside of like just being a this. <laughs> Yo, that's the thing about you never know when you're gonna get featured. Sometimes somebody's gonna phone it in. I'm not gonna uh did, did you I one it? time years ago I was producing an album for somebody else and they paid a crap ton of money for a guitarist who was kind of famous to play a solo on the song. I was just the producer. Enough disclaimers, the calf phoned it in. 
The cat phoned it in. Satriani comes, guns blazing. Ray guns, laser tag, <laughs> out for blood. This cat, dude. It's insane. That is insane. And he went hard on the melodies, too. He puts in these harmonies. <laughs> I get distracted guitar hero, dude. Somebody call Activision or whoever. Anyways, let's hear that in context because that solo is ridiculous. That solo is ridiculous. I <laughs> How does somebody teach you like Like what do you what is that? <laughs> What's that wig again? Like, it's <laughs> Yo, it's Sonny! Sonny's getting all tight right up below. Hold up. That rhythm section is tight. cute with that fill there I like that <laughs> I mean come on that is fun that is fun to me it was too dark before now that it's got the satch on it it just feels right like it didn't feel there was something about this tune that did not feel right initially and I think for me I was hesitant to put this tune out ever before I knew it was dope I knew it was a fun cool groove Nice fat groove that did its thing. It's a jammer. It's a viber. This is the, yeah. you know, this is perfect for the 1 a.m. Halloween set, you know. But what I'm saying is now it's got the satch on it. It puts the real vibe on that's in a different way. And being a collaboration, now I feel like he was able to really get into this tune in a way that for me, I would have felt like I was acting. You know, not in a bad way. Not no, like, no. Like, like, like faking it, but feel like I'm acting rather than being me. And on my albums, I want to be me. I feel like on this tune now, I get to be me by doing the pocket guitar thing and letting Joe just shine. Setting him up to just play T-ball over this sucker. And it might have taken almost five years to do so, but come on! If I would have put this tune out before, I wouldn't have had this sucker to call Satriani's bluff when he said, let's work together. And think of this, five years ago when you recorded this, did you even, how close were you, did you even thought about, oh yeah, Joseph Trion is going to play a song, or play this song for me. Not a chance. This is insane. This is, this, it's kind of crazy. The story about this. Yo, it's crazy. Moral of the story is, keep your artistic pursuit and vision alive. Yeah. A relentless pursuit to get the thing right. It took me five years to get this thing right. Okay? Did I succeed? Hey, the numbers will tell us. And my manager will tell me whether they think that I've succeeded or not. But I feel really good inside because I got one of my guitar heroes to play on this tune. And every time I hear it, it makes me laugh and smile and it brings joy to me. And I would have never thought that through this dark, weird song. <laughs> I and, know. Hey, thanks for joining us on this episode of On The One. We'll see you next time. Ha <laughs> <laughs>